this school, which is Tech Cross. I mean, I'm probably one of the people who you may say talks quite a lot in our country. But I believe that you can make your point forcefully, but respectfully. You can make your point and argue it out with the facts. You don't need to leave because you see, you even lose your audience. And it becomes clear that what you are saying is driven by emotion and just probably hatred. And it's not about your mind and what is good for the country. It's just about personality attack. It should not be about personality attack. It should be about the idea. What you want to see differently. And let us all agree that we can make those points, get cross. We can make those points without abusing those in political office or those who are our political opponents. But let's face it, some of the matters that are being raised, indeed most of the matters that are being raised, are important issues that we must address. I agree that the current 1992 constitution deserves to be amended. It needs an overhaul. I agree perfectly with young people out there who are agitating, calling for a new constitution. I agree. And I'll give you some reasons why I agree. I have come to the conclusion that this constitution gives too much power to the executive president. Too much power. Yeah. It's clear to me that because the constitution was being drafted at the time that you had Chairman Rowling, Chairman of the PNDC, in power. And he was going to be the first president to work with this constitution. And you know how we are in this our society. When you are given an assignment by your boss, many people just want to please the boss. I'm not too sure President Rowling himself asks for all these powers. But you know how we do things here, and how we like to please the big man. You know, but it's clear to me that there's too much power vested in the hands of one person, who virtually appoints everybody, including appointment in the security agency. So are you surprised that when a party is in power, they have confidence in the police, in the military, in the immigration, in fire service, all the security agencies, in the national security apparatus. BNI is now NIB. I don't know why they changed that name. They changed the name and made it sound like a bank. I mean, <laughs> it's one of the things that must stop in this country. Let's build tradition, you know, and stop this name changing. You know, let's focus on substance and not form. This business of changing names, changing names. What are we achieving? Uh, the senior high, secondary school. Uh, meanwhile, there are no textbooks. We don't have good labs, you know, computers. We won't focus on the substance. Hmm? These things must stop. Uh, too many politicians have seen the falling short of the glory of God when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to this uh, business of church. changing names and changing durations, three years, four years. Meanwhile, what is really in it, you know, should be about the content. But the point we were developing, why is it that when we are in power, we have so much confidence in the security agencies? It's because now we are making the appointments, and we know what we are doing with them, and we know who we are appointing who, and we know how we are doing the recruitment. But when you get into a position, you have no confidence, no trust. It's because you know what you were doing when you were there. And you know what now the other guys who are there now are doing. So why can't we say that when it comes to certain institutions as sensitive as the security agencies, political interference should be totally removed. Yeah. Must be totally removed.
the roof of, and that's where I am. So that I feel safe. I feel safe. Whether I am in power or I'm in office. And you must have heard recently that there was this debate in Parliament after a number of uh, people were shot dead and uh, with their souls. Rest in peace, uh, David Ankwa's killers have not been found. The Honorable Hayford's killers too. Um, I think prosecution is going on. Uh, I want to call for uh, expedited justice as I did uh, uh, last month in Parliament and to renew that call. But what happened after those deaths? MPs were told that, okay, now you, you are entitled to police, uh, police officers. So you can uh, apply, give an indication of, uh, of, of your readiness so that the police officer will be sent to you. Guess what happened? Almost nobody on the opposition side indicated their interest, said that they were ready to have a police officer. It was only when the announcement changed that, okay, if you can give an indication of specifically who you want, to be your bodyguard or to offer you protection. That's when you saw the opposition MPs participate. So you see where the problem is, the lack of trust. The other aspect of the constitution which I agree is the, is the, is the infamous Article 71 provision. And I have said that it is time to have an independent emoluments commission or put everybody under the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. Don't create two separate categories of work, of workforce. One, Article 70, 71, and then the others are under the Fair Wages. And there's this notion that those in the legislature, the executive, the judiciary, it's all about their own incestual privilege and advantage. So there are things that we can do if the political will is there. That we must do. And as young people, let's continue to agitate and ask for reform. But I will appeal that let us not bring down this democracy and usher in a period of dictatorship or authoritarianism. I saw some of the placards during the Fix the Country demonstration and I panicked. Check what is happening in Egypt now, after the Arab Spring. Check what's happening in Sudan and how many people are being killed. I believe that we can achieve the reforms that we want within the democratic space. I wouldn't want a coup to happen. I don't think that an uprising, a insurrection, is what will help us. We can use democratic, peaceful means to achieve the changes that we want to see, that will keep everybody alive, that will maintain the stability of our country. If not for anything, the peace and stability that we enjoy as a country where we can gather together as Christians and worship and praise our maker. Let's not take that for granted. It's not every African country that has that. It's not every country in the world that has that. You can ask the Syrians, you can ask, ask the Afghans, the Taliban are taking over. Next door, Burkina Faso, the terrorists have taken over. Extremists are all over the place. So let us resolve that we will use their cross language, we will use peaceful means to effect the changes that we want to see. And when it comes to choosing our leaders, let's be sure who we are choosing as leaders. And then when it comes to elections, don't always push others. Why not you? Why not you? Why not you get involved? All these are your ideas. Why just sit on the fence and just agitate? Why not get into the center? Too many young Christians are afraid to come into politics. Why? Please get involved. If you say politics is dirty, it's because you have allowed only dirty people to get in there to make it dirty. 
When you enter, it will be clean. When you enter, it will be clean. When you enter, it will be then a politics of ideas, of decency, of respect for each other. And then we can move our country forward. So, very soon there will be assembly elections. Very soon there will be elections at the various levels in the various political parties. Please don't shy away. Get involved. And some of the notions, some of the things that you hear, it's not always true. That if you don't have a godfather, if you don't have uh, tons of cash, you can't enter politics and you can't make it in politics. It's not true. Else, how will a 28-year-old be appointed a deputy minister? Who did I, what did I have at the time to pay anybody? I mean, to, to get appointed. But I've always shown interest in leadership right from my student days, becoming Luke's president at the university. And you will be noted when you show some good signs. You will be noted. And sometimes we put young people I mean, I can tell you, I don't know if Pastor Brian will release her, but that I'm really eyeing that 18 year old uh, young lady. She will be a fantastic women's organizer one day for the NCC if, uh, if she agrees to join my party. And I'm happy that the uh, Honorable Bobby Adam will go I mean, such an eloquent. I, I couldn't believe that she's only 18 years. You know, very, very eloquent, very, very dynamic. But that's somebody who, even if she decides to join another party from mine, I will still be proud of her, and I'll be happy that she's getting into the space. You know, and she'll make a difference. Very, very eloquent, very dynamic, and she can push change and pursue an agenda. That's what we want. So I want to encourage a lot of you that it's good that this hashtag has started. It's good that we are beginning to see these demonstrations because for a long time, it was all about focusing on other things, and we thought that politics should be left for others. But it's good that you are getting into the space. But it shouldn't end there in just pushing others. You can also get involved, get inside, and make that change that we all want to see. Because those ideas have popular support, and that's all you need, popular support. Again, let's go back to our history. Or such, Dr. Kwame Kuma was in prison when he won his first election. As MP for what is now the review, he was in prison. He didn't campaign himself. He didn't stand on any platform himself. Others had to campaign for him. And he defeated a gun in a crack. Most of you came to meet Jacob H. His father, he defeated him in a crack, a gun. He came from in Zima, in Nkrop. It tells you how we are going backwards as a country. Nkuma could come from Nkwe. It didn't matter that he's not a gun and probably couldn't speak gun. But he won his seat. He was in prison. But his ideas, you can't imprison ideas. You cannot imprison greatness. You cannot imprison anybody's destiny. The state cannot. The police cannot. The military cannot. Once you have fantastic ideas, you have great ideas, and you have a passion, you have a good heart, you want to really make a difference, an impact, leave a good name when you are given the opportunity, you will rise and you will get to the top. All you need is a good heart, good organization, great ideas, and you, you will make it. So let us see more young Christian activists in the space. Get to the center. Get involved. And we will all build that country that we want to see. A country of opportunity where nobody is left behind. Where there is no discrimination. Where you don't stand a chance because of who you know or who knows you. That is not the society that we need. So as I conclude, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that we must take out of here is that we are going to actively participate in forcing that change that we want to see. Just like young students came together and established the West Africa Students Union, 
and called the 1945 Manchester Conference and said, we are going back home as foreign students in the diaspora. Like Brian Amwadin said, he's coming back home to make an impact in Ghana. His predecessors are the Nkumas, the J.D. Dampers, the Wode Soyukas, the Ibo Kekas, the Julius Nyerere's, who said that they would also come back. And as young students, do you know that we will not have had the University of Ghana? The colonialists said that they, they have money to establish only one university, and they are going to the big country, Nigeria, to establish it in Ibadan. These young students who are going to see university education said, no, we will mobilize. We will have our own university. We don't need your money. Britain, Queen, you can keep your money. And they called on farmers. Can you imagine? Farmers. Market women. And they believed in their vision. They didn't have the opportunity to go to school. They were not educated. And that's why I like that question from that young man. And that is why he reminds us that we shouldn't think it's all about us. You see, those of us who have gone to school, who are in the elite few, we think about us too much. We are too greedy. And we think it's always about us. And we are never satisfied. Can you imagine those days? In 1948, market women, farmers, decided to, they were levied, they paid voluntarily for the University of Ghana to be established. That is why you have the Kwafu at the University of Ghana, named after farmers, farmers of this country. Today, most of us think that we should look down on people because they are not educated, because they have not gone to school. There's so much we can learn from them, and we must learn from them. When you come to my constituents, the people who have held this like seat as MPs are people who never went to school. But what they can teach you in politics, how to relate to people, how to understand the needs of the people, you will be amazed. No political science lecture, none of them taught me at the political science department at the University of Ghana. Like the practical know-how I'm getting from these people you will call unlettered, uneducated, and all of that. That is what these young people came down to achieve. And they were able to mobilize. Today, how many of you, university graduates, can go and talk to the Makola woman and they will listen to you? Do you even know how to humble yourself and speak their language and get a rapport with them and get them to understand you and agree with you that you are going to pursue a cause you want them to support? And you have no idea how much money they have there. They are richer than all of us here. You have no idea. So I'm always excited about these opportunities to engage, to interact with you, and to share ideas. And I want you to keep up your spirit. Don't keep what you learn from here all to yourself. Let the message circulate. Let it go down. And let many people see the impact. And let many people feel the impact. And I think that we can also do better in networking. We can decide to take up projects. Sometimes I criticize modern Christianity, and you hear many people do it, that it's become a bit too abstract. See how many, if you come to constituencies like mine, there will have been no education, there will have been no health care, but for Christianity. The first basic school, primary school, Middle schools were set up by Christian missionaries, Methodists, Presbyterians, Catholics. There will have been no health care. Even up to now, we don't have a district hospital built by the government. The only hospital that serves that purpose is the Bakor Catholic Hospital. And the name speaks for itself. And what the likes of people like Dr. Kofi Efa, Dr. Atukuba are doing, sacrificing decades of their lives those hospitals. Where are the modern schools, the modern hospitals of the current generation of Christians? The success of a church should not be just about how big the size of the building is. What real impact are we making in the society? 